the city of water, a must visit destination and for many, a place to cross out out of the travel bucket list. That's Venice. But what if you want more? What if you want to experience the real Venice, the Venice of the locals? Hey, we got you. We asked the Venetian locals for the favorite things to do in their city and they got back to us with this top 10 list. Here they come, the top 10 things to do in Venice. Let's start with the Rialto Bridge, the oldest bridge in Venice and during the day flooded by tourists. So here's a little secret. If you're an early bird or a night owl, you're in luck. During the night, the best way to see Rialto Bridge is from a boat. It is one of the most romantic spots in Venice. But if you listen to the locals, they're going to tell you. You go there early in the morning to have the Rialto for yourself. And if you combine it with a visit to the local fish market, even better. So Davide, how can we recognize when the fish is fresh? There are many ways to recognize the, a good fish. The first one is you have to check the skin behind here. Must be very red and looks juicy, of course. And the second secret is the eye. Must be jelly, but still hard and strong. The eye must look still alive. And when you cook it, you know that the fish is ready when the eye becomes white. When it's white, turn off the fire and eat it. The locals in Venice know how to make the best out of not so fun aqua alta, which literally means high water. It can happen multiple times a year, mainly between autumn and spring, and it's basically a super high tide. Here's when Venetians get creative, like in Libreria Aqua Alta, book and art lover's paradise. With a gondola, a bathtub and a boat, Luigi, the owner of this unique store, protects his precious books by any means. Come in and let your curious mind explore over thousands of books and quirky items. One last tip, sit on the steps for the perfect Instagram shot. Oh, San Marco Square, so beautiful but oh so crowded. Even the locals say, don't go to Piazza San Marco on Sundays or you won't see any pigeons, only tourists. When you can't escape the crowds of San Marco, climb up and enjoy it from above. Emanuele, tell us how. If you want to see San Marco but you are tired about the crowd, I really suggest you to go to San Giorgio Island. From San Giorgio Island you have the most beautiful view on Venice and you can see San Marco just behind you. My parents, they took their most beautiful wedding picture there and I suggest you to climb the bell tower because from the top you can see the entire Venice with a different perspective. So, if you're having a romantic trip to Venice, bring here your sweet half for that perfect shot. Take a break from the tourist crowds and go to Lido. Whenever you want to go to the beach or wander around the little center, the island of Lido is one of the things to do when visiting Venice. The best way to explore the island is by bike and with the local by your side. Pass by wild beaches and look at the lagoon from a different perspective. The vibe is peaceful and relaxed. Perfect also when visiting Venice with kids. To go fully local, visit the oldest part of Lido, Malamocco. And if you're lucky, you will meet one of the island's embroidery queens. There's only one real way to go around Venice. From the water, Venice gifts you with a whole different expression. Listen to one of the Venice locals, Captain Ugo, and learn when and why is the best time to plan your boat ride. Trust us, you'll be literally struck by the city's marvel. So we're now on the, uh, the Grand Canal in front of the, uh, the train station. Behind us is Piazzale Roma. Uh, so there's a lot of traffic here at this time. The traffic consists mostly of the motoscafi or the taxis and also the, the, the vaporetti, vaporettos, like the one that's passing me now. Uh, these are the equivalent of the buses here in Venice. But at night, it's the complete opposite. It's beautiful, there's nobody around, and the water becomes flat. In some areas, it becomes like a, like a mirror when it's, so, when it's so flat. Mamma mia, the next item on the list is to die for. Get ready, it's a gelato, but not a regular one. Go to Gelati Nico, where the owner cuts up for you a big block of Gianduiotto and tops it up with whipped cream. 
This is a treat that you definitely cannot miss when you're in Venice. Take it to go and walk down the Judeca Canal for a beautiful view of a Judeca island. Venice is not just one island, in fact, it's made of loads of tiny islands divided by canals and the Venetian lagoon. So, why only visit one when you can hop around? It's pretty easy. Pick one island you want to visit. We recommend Burano, Murano and Mazzorbo. Jump on a Vaporetto, a local canal boat and enjoy the scenic ride. If you want to feel the local vibe, go to non-touristy island of Mazzorbo. From here, all you have to do is cross a bridge and you're in Burano. Make sure you have plenty of space in your phone because everywhere you look is picture perfect. Take the hidden streets and you'll find the rainbow of old fishermen houses. And let's not forget about Murano, an island known for its colorful glass making tradition. Here's a local tip. If you want to buy something, step away from the main streets and go to the alleyways where you can find the best artisans and prices. Gondolas. Gondolas everywhere. Not just a tourist attraction, but a way for the locals to navigate through Venice. But where does it all start? That place to go is Squero di San Trovaso, in Dorso Duro, a boatyard and a gondola workshop. A true local site you shouldn't miss. Take a peek to this off the beaten track area and see the locals in action. A gondola ride in Venice can get really expensive, but there is a way to feel the thrill of crossing the Canal Grande without spending a fortune. Local Marzia told us how. There are three places in Venice where you can cross the Grand Canal using a gondola, and uh, these places are nearby the Academia Bridge, the other one is uh, nearby San Thomas, and the other one is nearby Cadoro and you pay a tip of 2 euro per person and uh, you just cross the Grand Canal from one place to the other side. Venetian uses the gondola only this way, just crossing the Grand Canal from one side to the other one. On the sign you will find written traghetto and the word traghetto means crossing, uh, in this case the Grand Canal. My favorite dish is the next one. These are king prawns made in two ways. This one is wrapped with bacon, smoked bacon actually, and this one is Norma king prawn, just with garlic, salt and pepper. Well, of course, seafood in Venice needs to have a spot in this list. The place to find the best seafood in town? Definitely in a local home. Davide, an amazing chef, is your man. The ingredients are top-notch, the recipes are according to tradition and the flavors are simply mouth-watering. Trust us, you won't forget wow. what he will cook for you. But if you're in a city and looking for a quick fish bite, go for Scartoso di Pesce in Aqua and Mice, a few steps away from the Rialto Bridge. This street food treat is a cornetto filled with various fried fish that will leave you craving for more. Picture this, you're outside of a baccaro sitting on a boat with a prosecco in one hand and a chiquetto in another one. A breathtaking view of the canals lit up by the moonlight as you cheer for a fantastic night out. Sounds amazing, right? That's how the locals enjoy the nights in Venice. Don't believe me? Hear it from the locals themselves and get more recommendations on where to go for an amazing night out in the city of water. Nightlife in Venice is square life. Usually we meet up with friends and we start the osteria crawling. We get from an osteria to the other one, drinking and having the cicchetti, which is the Venetian tapas. Let's say we're not worried about driving license over here. We can get not sober and don't worry about that. Um, my favorite places are Cannareggio, especially the long walkable bank, which is called Misericordia, where you can have a lot of osterias. You choose the one you like the most uh, and you can enjoy it. And the other one is uh, Campo Santa Margherita. Usually is attended by younger crowds, let's say, but it's still very characteristic and pretty wide. So there you go, my friends. The top 10 things to do in Venice, like a local and buy the locals. Any suggestions or other cool places to recommend? Share your tips and tricks for an awesome time in Venice in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more travel videos. Ciao!